Hi, my name is Jim Hessler. I've been a battlefield guide since 2003. I'm coming to you right now from East Cemetery Hill. And behind me is an equestrian statue to Second Corps Commander Winfield S. Hancock, uh, one of the most dynamic and one of the most popular Corps Commanders leaders here on the Gettysburg Battlefield. Um, there's a lot of leadership lessons we could do with Hancock. I'm going to talk a little bit about his arrival on the battlefield on the evening of July 1st, 1863. Now, it might be useful to remember that Hancock was newly promoted to corps command at Gettysburg. He was, in fact, lowest on the seniority chain, which a lot of people often forget about. On the morning, early afternoon of July 1st, 1863, while fighting was going on here at Gettysburg, and Union Army Commander George Meade was back in Tawnytown, Maryland, Meade empowered Hancock to basically come up to Gettysburg, assess the situation here, and determine if this was going to be a suitable place to concentrate the Army and fight a battle. So Hancock was briefed quickly on what General Meade's plans were, and Hancock spent much of the afternoon of July 1st en route from Tawnytown to Gettysburg. As fate would have it, Hancock arrived here mid to late afternoon on Cemetery Hill as the Union Army 1st Corps and 11th Corps were being driven off of the fields north and west of the town. Hancock was a dynamic leader. He looked good. You know, sometimes it helps to look like a leader. He looked good in the saddle. He was the kind of guy that men respected. Uh, he was also a strict and profane disciplinarian. So now that he started thundering some expletives at the soldiers to kind of get them to rally here. But Hancock also had a potentially difficult situation to deal with because he was below Union General Oliver Howard on the seniority chain. Hancock had been empowered by Meade to take command, but Hancock didn't really need to pull, pull that note out and show that to Howard. He was able to basically manage the situation and get Howard and other generals here on the field to cooperate. So over the next couple of hours, late afternoon, early evening, Hancock, Howard, Buford, other guys basically rallied the Union troops on the Cemetery Hill. They would later put troops over on Culp's Hill and even send some guys down behind us onto Little Round Top and start to take shape of what we know is the Union Army fishhook position at Gettysburg. So what's the leadership lesson here? First of all, Meade had empowered Hancock. Hancock, though, was a natural leader. Sometimes leaders are born, sometimes they're made. I think in Hancock's case, it's a little bit of both. But Hancock, through talent and sheer force of personality, helped rally the troops on Cemetery Hill. And this became, in my opinion, the most important position on the Gettysburg battlefield. So my name is Jim Hessler. That's Hancock the Superb behind me. And uh, we hope to see you in Gettysburg again soon.